The Canadian government has recently announced substantial increases to two crucial retirement benefit programs Old Age Security OAS and the Canada Pension Plan CPP. These changes are set to have a profound impact on the financial well-being of millions of Canadian seniors, potentially putting hundreds of extra dollars in their pockets each month. As the cost of living continues to rise across the country, this news comes as a welcome relief to many retirees who have been struggling to make ends meet on fixed incomes. The Old Age Security Program, which provides a basic level of income to Canadian seniors aged 65 and older, will see its maximum monthly payment increase by a significant margin. This boost is designed to help offset the effects of inflation and ensure that older Canadians can maintain a decent standard of living in their golden years. Meanwhile, the Canada Pension Plan, a contributory public pension plan that provides a monthly benefit to eligible retirees, will also undergo substantial changes to its payment structure, resulting in higher benefits for many recipients. These increases are not just minor adjustments, they represent a meaningful attempt by the government to address the growing financial challenges faced by Canada's aging population. With life expectancy on the rise and the cost of healthcare, housing and essential goods continuing to climb, many seniors have found themselves in increasingly precarious financial situations. The enhanced OAS and CPP payments are intended to provide a much-needed financial cushion and help alleviate some of the stress associated with living on a fixed income in a rapidly changing economic landscape. For those who rely heavily on these government benefits to cover their basic living expenses, the news of these increases comes as a significant relief. Many seniors have been forced to make difficult choices between paying for necessities like food, medication, and housing. The boost in monthly payments could mean the difference between just scraping by and being able to enjoy a more comfortable retirement. It's important to note that while these increases are certainly welcome, they may not entirely solve the financial challenges faced by all Canadian seniors. However, they do represent a step in the right direction and demonstrate the government's commitment to supporting its older citizens. The timing of these increases is particularly significant given the economic turbulence caused by the global COVID-19 pandemic. Many retirees have seen their savings dwindle due to market volatility, while others have had to provide financial support to younger family members who may have lost jobs or faced reduced income during the crisis. The enhanced OAAs and CPP payments will provide a measure of stability and security at a time when many seniors are feeling particularly vulnerable. It's worth noting that the increases to OAAs and CPP payments are not uniform across the board. The exact amount of additional money you'll receive depends on various factors, including your age, your income level, and your contribution history to the CPP. Some seniors may see a substantial boost to their monthly benefits, while others may experience a more modest increase. Regardless of the specific amount, however, any increase in retirement income is likely to be welcomed by Canadian seniors. One of the most significant aspects of these changes is the potential long-term impact on retirement planning for future generations of Canadians. The enhanced benefits send a clear message that the government is committed to maintaining and strengthening the social safety net for older citizens. This may provide some reassurance to younger Canadians who are concerned about their ability to save enough for retirement in an era of rising costs and economic uncertainty. However, it's important to emphasize that while these government benefits are an important part of retirement income, they should not be relied upon as the sole source of financial support in one's later years. Financial experts continue to stress the importance of personal savings, workplace pensions, and other investments to ensure a comfortable and secure retirement. The increased OAS and CP payments should be viewed as a supplement to, rather than a replacement for, individual retirement planning efforts. For those who are already receiving OAAs and CPP benefits, the process of obtaining these increases should be relatively straightforward. In most cases, the adjustments will be made automatically, and recipients will see the higher amounts reflected in their monthly payments without having to take any additional action. However, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on your benefit statements and to contact Service Canada if you have any questions or concerns about your payments. It's also worth noting that these increases may have implications for other aspects of a senior's financial situation. For example, those who receive income-tested benefits such as the Guaranteed Income Supplement GIs may need to be aware of how the higher OAs and CPP payments could affect their eligibility or benefit amounts. Similarly, the increased income could potentially impact eligibility for certain provincial or territorial benefits programs. As always, it's advisable to consult with a financial advisor or benefits specialist to understand the full implications of these changes on your individual circumstances. 
The announcement of these increases has been met with a generally positive response from advocacy groups representing seniors and retirees. Many organizations have praised the government for taking action to address the financial challenges faced by older Canadians, particularly in light of the rising cost of living. However, some critics argue that the increases, while welcome, do not go far enough in addressing the broader issues of senior poverty and financial insecurity. One of the ongoing debates surrounding retirement benefits in Canada is the question of whether the eligibility age for OAS should be lowered. Currently, the standard age to start receiving OAS benefits is 65, although it's possible to defer receipt of benefits until age 70 in exchange for higher monthly payments. Some advocacy groups have called for the eligibility age to be reduced to 60, arguing that this would provide much-needed support to seniors who are struggling financially in the years leading up to their 65th birthday. However, opponents of this idea point out that lowering the eligibility age could put additional strain on the program's long-term sustainability. Another important aspect of the OAAs and CPP increases is their potential impact on the Canadian economy as a whole. By putting more money into the pockets of seniors, these changes could lead to increased consumer spending, particularly in sectors that cater to older Canadians. This could potentially have a stimulative effect on the economy, creating jobs and driving growth in various industries. Additionally, the increased financial security provided by these benefits may allow some seniors to remain in their own homes for longer, potentially easing some of the pressure on long-term care facilities and other support services for the elderly. It's also worth considering how these changes fit into the broader context of Canada's retirement income system. The country's approach to retirement security is often described as a three-pillar system, consisting of government benefits OAAs and CPP, workplace pensions, and individual savings. The increases to OAS and CP payments represent a strengthening of the first pillar, but questions remain about the overall health of the retirement income system. With many Canadians lacking access to workplace pensions and struggling to save adequately for retirement, there are ongoing discussions about how to ensure financial security for future generations of retirees. One potential area of concern is the sustainability of these increased benefits over the long term. As Canada's population continues to age with a larger proportion of citizens entering retirement age, there will be increased pressure on government programs like OAS and CPP. Policymakers will need to carefully balance the need to provide adequate support for seniors with the necessity of maintaining the financial stability of these programs for future generations. This may involve ongoing adjustments to contribution rates, benefit levels, and eligibility criteria to ensure the long-term viability of these crucial retirement income sources. It's also important to consider the regional variations in the cost of living across Canada and how these might impact the effectiveness of the OAS and CPP increases. While the benefit amounts are standardized across the country, the reality is that seniors living in high-cost urban areas like Vancouver or Toronto may still struggle to make ends meet, even with the enhanced payments. This raises questions about whether there should be some form of regional adjustment to these benefits to account for variations in living costs across different parts of the country. Another factor to consider is the impact of these changes on intergenerational equity. While the increases are undoubtedly positive for current retirees and those approaching retirement age, some younger Canadians may have concerns about the long-term sustainability of these programs and whether similar levels of support will be available when they reach retirement age. This highlights the need for ongoing dialogue and policy adjustments to ensure that the retirement income system remains fair and sustainable across generations. The announcement of these increases also brings attention to the broader issue of financial literacy among Canadian seniors. While the boost in benefits is certainly helpful, it's crucial that older Canadians have the knowledge and skills to manage their finances effectively in retirement. This includes understanding how to budget on a fixed income, making informed decisions about investments and savings, and being aware of potential financial scams that often target seniors. The government and various organizations offer resources and programs aimed at improving financial literacy among older Canadians, and these efforts may become even more important as benefit levels increase. It's also worth noting that the increases to OAAs and CPP payments may have implications for how Canadians approach retirement planning throughout their working lives. With the promise of more generous government benefits, some individuals may be tempted to rely more heavily on these programs and save less on their own. However, financial experts generally advise against this approach, emphasizing the importance of diversifying retirement income sources and not relying too heavily on any single source of funds in later life. 
The changes to OAAS and CPP also highlight the ongoing debate about the appropriate balance between government support and individual responsibility when it comes to retirement planning. While these programs provide an important safety net, there is a broader conversation to be had about how to encourage and facilitate greater personal savings and financial preparedness among Canadians of all ages. This may involve policies such as tax incentives for retirement savings, improved financial education in schools, or innovative new savings vehicles designed to complement existing government benefits. Another important consideration is how these increases might affect the labor market participation of older Canadians. With more generous retirement benefits available, some seniors may choose to retire earlier or reduce their work hours. On the other hand, the additional income security provided by these enhanced benefits might allow some older workers to remain in the workforce longer on a part-time or flexible basis, contributing their skills and experience to the economy for a longer period. This could have significant implications for workforce demographics, knowledge transfer between generations, and overall economic productivity. It's also worth considering how the increases to OAS and CPP fit into Canada's broader social policy landscape. These changes represent a significant investment in the well-being of older Canadians, but they also raise questions about resource allocation across different demographic groups and social needs. Policymakers must balance the needs of seniors with other pressing social issues such as child poverty, affordable housing, and healthcare accessibility for all age groups. This underscores the complex nature of social policy decision-making and the need for a holistic approach to addressing the needs of all Canadians. The announcement of these benefit increases also brings attention to the issue of elder poverty in Canada. While the country generally has a lower rate of senior poverty compared to many other developed nations, there are still significant pockets of financial hardship among older Canadians, particularly among single seniors and those with limited work histories. The enhanced OAS and CPP payments may help to alleviate some of this hardship, but they also highlight the need for continued efforts to address the root causes of elder poverty and to ensure that all seniors have access to the resources they need to live with dignity and security. Another important aspect to consider is how these changes might affect the dynamics of family support for older Canadians. In many cases, adult children provide financial assistance to their aging parents to help cover living expenses. The increase in government benefits may alleviate some of this burden, potentially freeing up resources within families for other purposes, such as saving for their own retirement or supporting younger generations. This could have ripple effects throughout family financial planning and intergenerational wealth transfer. It's also worth noting that the increases to OAS and CPP payments may have implications for the private pension and insurance industries. With more generous government benefits available, there may be changes in how Canadians approach private pension plans, annuities, and other retirement income products. But this could lead to shifts in the financial services marketplace and potentially impact the types of products and services offered to seniors and those planning for retirement. The enhanced benefits also raise questions about the role of technology in delivering and managing government pension programs. As benefit amounts increase and the number of recipients grows, there may be a greater need for efficient, user-friendly digital systems to administer these programs. This could involve improvements to online portals for checking benefit status, automated payment systems, and the use of data analytics to identify trends and potential issues in program delivery. However, it's crucial that any technological advancements in this area are implemented with consideration for seniors who may have limited digital literacy or access to technology. Another important consideration is how these changes might affect Canada's international competitiveness and attractiveness as a destination for retirees. More generous retirement benefits could potentially make Canada a more appealing option for people considering where to spend their retirement years, including both Canadian expatriates considering returning home and international retirees looking for a high quality of life. This could have implications for immigration policy, healthcare system planning, and the real estate market in popular retirement destinations across the country. It's also worth considering how the increases to OAAs and CPP fit into the broader context of global trends in pension reform. Many countries around the world are grappling with the challenges of aging populations and increasing life expectancy, leading to various approaches to ensuring the sustainability of public pension systems. Canada's decision to enhance these benefits could be seen as a bold move in the face of these demographic challenges, and it may be instructive to compare this approach with strategies adopted by other nations facing similar issues. The announcement of these benefit increases also brings attention to the importance of clear communication and education about retirement benefits, 
it's crucial that all eligible Canadians are aware of the changes and understand how they might be affected. This highlights the need for comprehensive outreach efforts by the government, including targeted communications to current beneficiaries, information campaigns for those approaching retirement age, and resources to help younger Canadians understand how these programs fit into their long-term financial planning. In conclusion, the announced increases to OS and CPP payments represent a significant development in Canada's approach to supporting its senior population. While these changes are generally positive and will provide much-needed financial relief to many older Canadians, they also raise important questions about the long-term sustainability of these programs, their impact on individual retirement planning, and their place within the broader context of social policy and economic management. As these changes are implemented, it will be crucial for policymakers, financial experts, and advocacy groups to monitor their effects closely and to continue working towards a comprehensive and sustainable approach to ensuring financial security for all Canadians in their later years. Ultimately, while these benefit increases are a welcome step, they should be seen as part of an ongoing process of adapting and strengthening Canada's retirement income system to meet the evolving needs of its aging population in an ever-changing economic landscape.